Good morning, everybody. And we are back with the Bishop Car Chronicles. It is time for another segment of uh, Renewing the Mind and the Body for a Healthy Living. And while the notifications are going out, we'd like to send a happy birthday shout out to Pamela Johnson, to Simone Sparks, to John McCall, and to Christopher White. And if today is your birthday, I pray that your day is filled with many blessings, gifts, and love from all around, and that you enjoy as many of the sweet things as you desire. Just don't make yourself sick, all right? It is a marvelous Monday. And again, it is time for Renewing the Mind and the body for healthy living. If this is one of your first time watching one of these broadcasts, I want you to know that they are to encourage you, to empower you, to educate you, to motivate you, to inspire you, to uplift you, to move towards your destiny, operating in the purpose for which you've been created using the gifts that are within you. I would like to say good morning to Mo Steph. That is my guy. Appreciate you for tuning in, my brother. Uh, love you so very much. Appreciate the support uh, for all of you who are consistent viewers and constant supporters of this broadcast. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I appreciate you. I love you. I thank you so much for your likes, for your shares, for your comments, for your uh, thumbs ups and your hearts. All of that means a great deal to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm not going to be on here very long. I'm actually counting down. Good morning, Mother Downsella. Thank you so much for tuning in. She is another faithful viewer and supporter uh, of the ministry. And I just want to let you all know that I appreciate you so very much. Um, today, I wanted to come on. I hope you all had a most wonderful um, 4th of July holiday, um, Independence Day. And uh, I know that I did. I had an awesome, awesome time, spent time with my future mother in love. And we are doing we were doing some wedding planning things with my fiance and just trying to nail down a few things. Uh, for those of you who may not have heard, uh, may not know, but yours truly is going to be married. And the uh, date is October the 12th, 2019 at 3.30 p.m. right here in Columbia, Missouri. Thank you so much for those red and blue dots. It means a great deal. I am super excited to be um, exchanging vows with the love of my life life on that day. And I absolutely cannot wait. I look forward to it. You are invited uh, to the wedding ceremony. Again, it is free and open to the public. The ceremony is, it is going to be again, October the 12th, 2019, 3.30 PM here in Columbia, Missouri at the Missouri United Methodist Church, 204 South 9th Street. So if you are in the Columbia, Missouri area, if you would like to witness the exchange of our vows before God, uh, you are most w uh, certainly welcome to attend. It's going to be a enjoyable experience, a wonderful experience, a blessed experience. Our theme is Thy Kingdom Come, and so the attire for the ceremony is black tie. So that's your long gowns. That is your tuxedos. So put on your hair, get it fixed up, put on your makeup, and do your nails. Brothers, get yourself all groomed up and all fresh and crispy edges and smelling good. And uh, we will look forward to, we would love to see you and look forward to seeing you um, there uh, at the uh, wedding ceremony of yours truly and my love, Miss Whitley Yasmin. And so uh, going on. Uh, because my time is getting out from under me. I've got just about seven minutes, maybe now a little bit under that. Uh, good morning, Overseer Marcia. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I wanted to uh, come on and speak to you all. Like so much has been processing through my mind. So much has been going on and um, just really trying to narrow down how I wanted to target and start to speak to certain things that, again, that are on my heart, that are on my mind. And I appreciate you all for tuning in um, because if you are at a place, I will certainly love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, your comments, because I believe that we are all able to strengthen one another together. Uh, what you share will impact and empower me and what I share will impact and empower you, all right, educate you. And so um, I always want to make sure that I speak intelligently uh, when I come on and that I uh, be able to, I'm able to provide some, some sound, excuse me, some sound wisdom some sound knowledge. Good morning, cousin, missionary Mary there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, one of the things I'm going to just go ahead and speak to it. I was speaking about July the 4th. And of course, we know that that is Independence Day for here in America. And I've had several conversations. Um, it was one of the strongest conversations on this recent holiday. And we were talking about uh, how, of course, it is to mark and to celebrate America's dependence, or should I say independence from the rule or control of Britain. And so, you know, the Revolutionary War that occurred. I don't know all of the history of it, but I know that that war ensued so that um, that the uh, Americas are the European settlers would be able to break free from Britain's control. And um, after realizing, and I guess this year it took me this long for me to actually realize and recognize what Juneteenth was all about and coming to understand that Juneteenth was actually the, uh, the date that 
the African slaves in Texas got the word that slaves had been emancipated uh, and slaves actually were set free as a result of the civil of the Civil War. So the Independence Day that we celebrate is a national holiday. June, uh, July the fourth is actually uh, America's freedom from Britain. But Juneteenth is the African slaves. Um, celebration of independence from slavery. And so, but still what ends up happening after they got the word, which is actually two years actually after the Emancipation and Proclamation had been signed by President Abraham Lincoln, um, they did not get the word in Texas until two years later. So even though, and I was thinking about this this morning, I was like, man, ain't that something? Even though the proclamation had already been signed, they did not know that they were free. And then that just goes to show, I just like, I felt that to be a preaching moment that God can have already done something for us, for us. And we don't know that it has already occurred until the manifestation arrives or until the messenger arrives at our doorstep because they had to send the message. They had to send the word down to Texas to let them know that they were a free people. And so I made it up in my mind, and this is just for me in my house, that I am going to celebrate Juneteenth from here on out. And, you know, July 4th is a great holiday and thank, uh, I'm thankful to have the time off from work or whatnot and to be able to spend it with family and friends and things of that nature. But, um, you know, I'm really going to uh, invest more of my time and my studies and my celebration in Juneteenth because, of course, that's that's a part of our heritage as African people or African-American people or people of color here in these United States of America. And so going on to say that even after the that's right, most stuff, even after the um, the Civil War had completed or was finished and they got the word, there was the reconstruction period. And my fiance was helping me to kind of understand that that was a time where um, even though slaves were free, they were manipulating the system so that they could enslave Africans again and continue to work for the slave master. And so, of course, then they went on through that. And then after the Reconstruction period came the civil rights era, y'all. Now, watch this. Many of you that are watching this, we are not that far removed from the civil rights era. Of course, all of that uh, happened like in the, the 1960s, et cetera. And so, of course, some of you um, were born and you were you were well um, alive during that period. People like me came in on the <clears throat> on the tail end or the aftermath of the civil rights era. But we are still under the effects of racial um uh, oppression. We are still under the effects of systemic oppression. We are still under the effects of, of prejudice and hatred and things of that nature. And one of the things that I saw this morning, it was so heartbreaking uh, as I as I was preparing myself to get ready to come out today that, uh, and I shared the article on my, on my uh, personal page about how a 17-year-old kid by the name of Elijah Almin was brutally murdered by a man, a 27 year old white man named, I believe it was Michael Adams was his name or either Michael Smith, Michael Adams, um, 27 years old. This is there in, uh, in Arizona, 17 year old kid had his throat slit by this 27 year old man because he said that he felt threatened by the music that, um, Elijah was listening to. And apparently Elijah was listening to some rap music in his car. And so he went into the circle K and this was the, this was the sad part for me is that Elijah did not see his killer coming. And, uh, the report is that the killer, walked up to him while he was at the soda machine and from behind slit his throat and, and took the young man's life. And if that doesn't alarm you, if that doesn't move you, if that doesn't cause some type of effect within you, I would strongly question your humanity, whether or not you are real and uh, whether or not, you know, you have a heart at all for people. Because this kid was 17 years old. He hadn't even graduated high school yet. And the report is that he was working jobs, you know, trying to save money to buy a car and working to uh, eventually graduate from high school. But now he won't get that experience. His family won't get that experience because his life has been taken. Again, these are the effects of racism. These are the effects of hatred. These are the effects of uh, prejudice. And most oftentimes it's not just one way, you know, because there are some black people that are prejudiced against whites in there are whites that are prejudiced against people of color. You know, looking also there at, I was reading up on the uh, highly, what is the name? Holly Bailey 
uh, story. And Holly was casted to be uh, to play Ariel in the movie that's going to come out, The Little Mermaid. And of course, there are several um, there are several folks. I'll just put it that way, who are strongly disliking the fact that she has been cast to play the mermaid because they say that she's a person of color or she's black and they don't think that a black girl or a black woman should be playing the role of the little mermaid and it's just it's so again it's it's alarming it's uh frustrating to realize watch this y'all we are in the year of 2019 and we are still living under the effects of oppression and we are still living under the effects of racism i've got to go i've been on here too long my time is up but I wanted to come on to say that something is wrong in this country. And we've been knowing that something is wrong since the beginning of their entry into this country. Since the time that the European settlers traveled over to the Americas and they again took those slaves from Africa and brought them over to this country and forced them to work, you know, during the slavery period, things are just totally broken. And the only way now, this is why I get off of here because I get excited. The only way for us to break free from the this system that we live in, the only way for us to break free from this system that we live in is to accept Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And the word of the Lord says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Because when we accept Christ, then we are able to be seated in the heavenly places. We are able to ascend this world. We are able to ascend the effects of racism. And we are able to ascend the effects of prejudice and hatred and hate crimes. And we are able to ascend to a place as most stuff. And uh, my cousin said earlier, a place of freedom where we are able to then speak and to call those things that be not as though they were. And so I want to encourage every believer that is on here right now. If you, especially if you are a person of color, and even if you're not a person of color, if you stop and take a look around you, there are many issues that are going on in our world, several issues that are going on. But this is one of the ones that's near and dear to my heart because it's an injustice to people of color. And because I am a person of color, that makes me a target, makes me a target. Hear me what I'm saying. It makes me a target. And so I choose to strike back and I choose to fight back, but not with knives and guns. For the word of the Lord says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. That's where our fight and our battle is. And so we have to ascend the anger that we feel. We have to ascend and transcend beyond the frustration that we feel. And we have to move into the realm of the spirit to begin to legislate and to begin to war in the spirit. The word of the Lord says that he teaches our hands to war. And so sometimes the reason why we lose the battle is because we don't know how to fight. But I'm encouraging you that our fight must ensue in the spirit. We cannot go and attack other humans because of the way that we feel and because of the mistreatment and because of the injustices. But we must, again, ascend and transcend into the realm of the spirit that we may begin to fight there. All right. The word of the Lord says that we pull down strongholds. All right. We cast down every vain imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. All right. And so as we start to do that, as we start to move and we start to fight in the spirit. Again, open up your mouth and use that mouth gate that God has given to you. Instead of using it to cuss out your family members and your friends and to holler at your children and your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, use your mouth to begin to speak the word of God. And the word of the Lord is not just the word, but it is the two-edged sword that is able to cut and divide asunder is what the word of the Lord says. Oh God. Yes, ma'am, Mother Down Seller. She says, Lord, help us all. Your people need you. Racism is taking lives. It is absolutely a Occurring. But I just want to pray and I rebuke the spirit of racism. I rebuke the spirit of hatred. I rebuke the spirit of prejudice in the name of Jesus. And I come against it in the blood of Jesus and with the blood of Jesus. And I declare and decree that the plans of the enemy, uh, that they cease to exist. And I speak utter chaos and confusion in the camp of the devil to the kingdom of darkness and everything that the devil means for, e for evil, that it now turns around on itself. 
myself in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for the family of Elijah Almin. And I pray, Father, that you will bring healing, that you will bring comfort, God, that you will bring joy, that you will bring life back to that family in Jesus' name as they endeavor to move forward in this place, in this realm without their loved one. God, we know that you're more than able because you've done it before, God. And we know that you never lose. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the Lord strong and mighty, mighty in battle. And we know that you never lose. And so, Father, we know that you are fighting for us, but we also know that you need us in order to fight in this realm. And so, Father, I call every believer to attention. I call them to awaken from their slumber and I call them to purpose. I call them to destiny. And Father, I declare and decree that every gift that you have given to your people, that they now be stirred in the name of Jesus. Stir up every gift, Father, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And I pray, God, that you teach our hands to war and that you give us the strategies for execution in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that we arise with boldness and that we go forth. Father, for you said that we can come boldly before your throne of grace and that we may obtain mercy. And so, Father, I thank you for having mercy upon us, your children, upon your people uh, across the face of this planet. I thank you for having mercy upon us, God. I thank you for extending your grace unto us, Father, for it is in you that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. And God, because you love this, you have not taken us out, God. We thank you for your hand of protection upon us, God. And I plead, oh God, your blood again over the lives of your people, over the lives of your sons and your daughters, upon your children, God. I pray that you you release angels, oh God, hallelujah, to do warfare on our behalf in the name of Jesus, protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. Now, Lord, as we move through this day, I pray, God, that it would be productive. I pray, God, that you would let it be fruitful, God. I pray that we would multiply, hallelujah, and that we will walk in your word and that we walk in obedience in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, and that the Holy Spirit, oh God, will lead and guide us all of the way. For we trust you, oh God, with our whole heart and we lean not into our own understanding. Father, I declare and decree that you have your way in the lives of your people this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. And I pray uh, again that you will have a most wonderful day, a fantastic day. It is a marvelous Monday. Remember to pray for your brother and your sister across the world because we are all under the same oppression. The enemy is seeking whom he may devour, but I declare and decree that you will not be devoured in Jesus name. I love you. I pray that you've been encouraged, empowered, educated, motivated, inspired, and uplifted to move towards your destiny, operating in the purpose for which you've been created using the gifts that are within you. And I'm signed off by singing hello 2019 i'm going up and so are you and what's to come for you and for me it's better than what's been mad love